Okay, so I wanted to uh, to discuss pilot shoots in this episode. One of the things that drives me over the wall are people that uh, they get their A license and they uh, maybe they even go 100, 200 jumps in, and they uh, you know they still don't know how to properly cock their pilot shoot. And you know I'm I'm speaking from my own experience. I was one of them. Um, but uh, looking back, uh, spread the word if you if you haven't already. It's just so incredibly important that you're you're able to take care and maintain your own gear, um, and know what to look for when stuff uh, is breaking down and failing. Right. So a lot of people they don't even know what an uncocked pilot shoot looks like, which is here on the left versus a cocked pilot shoot. Um, they just see a window, um, a little window on their bridle. And if something's painted a certain color, they proceed to jump it, right? Or they do some bullshit test where they drop the pilot chute and they see if it it glides to the air and doesn't immediately sink. You know, it's probably okay if I jump this. There's there's not going to be anything wrong. Um, but you really need to know what to look for um, when you're cocking your pilot chute. And again, this is extremely important. And, well, if you don't do it correctly, you're going to immediately have to go to your reserve and, um, you know, it's probably going to be the end of your day, and that's probably going to be the least of your concerns, right? So there's certain checkpoints when you learn how to pack a main that are critical checkpoints. And, you know, maybe you could get away on a jump not flaking, not saying you shouldn't, but if you forgot, you know, you may not have a line over. Again, I'm not saying you shouldn't you shouldn't flake every time, but it's it's not as important as, as making sure your pilot, your pilot shoots cocked, right? Um, or that you don't have a shitty closing loop, right? Those are things that uh, they can kill you, all right? So I wanted, again, like I said, to create a quick episode to show you what to look for, make this easy for you, so you're not, uh, you know, just always relying on some window that some person at uh, some manufacturing company um, who doesn't know what they're doing could have accidentally messed up on, and you're jumping a, a pilot shoot that's not actually cocked. This is a side preference to this. I mean, there's really no alternatives. You're only going to see the collapsible pilot shoots like this on uh, on sport mains. Um, and when you start getting into seat and chest and lap, all those for emergency situations, use the spring-loaded pilot shoots. Honestly, unless you're jumping some uh, high-performance sub-150, maybe even smaller than that, you're not going to notice a lot of performance degradation under canopy if you have a, a non-collapsible pilot chute. So most of these manufacturers also make a pilot chute that stays permanently cocked. And you inevitably jumped one when you were on student status. And, um, well, the idea there was is if, if you forgot to cock your pilot chute, which you didn't have to cock because, it, well, it stayed permanently cocked, was no big deal. It basically eliminated uh, pilot shoot and tow, right? Um, I strongly suggest, you know, if you're jumping 170, 180, you know, 190, 210, 230, anything, like I said, over 150 square feet in terms of main canopy size, I personally would just stay with a, a non-collapsible pilot shoot. Then you don't have to worry about this, right? And again, you're not going to notice a lot of performance degradation. Um jumping a non-collapsible pilot chute unless you're jumping something like I said it's very steep a lot of performance um you know then that's when you're talking maybe uh you know getting a collapsible pilot chute is going to be uh very very noticeable but uh here's what you're looking at on the left we have a collapsed pilot chute that you would commonly see when you get down from a skydive and on the right we have an uncollapsed pilot chute that's been cocked and it's ready for a skydive notice here that on the Collapse pilot chute that the kill line, which you can't really see, but it's connected from the apex top of this pilot chute routed through the bridle is straight. And then there's a piece of tape inside of this pilot chute that's loose, right? So we use the terms loose and straight. So again, we've got loose tape here, right? And we see too how close this handle, this is where the handle's at, how close that is to the bridle. That's an easy way to tell. There's two ways you can actually tell. Visually, you can look at it and you can see when you hold it straight up that this handle is very, very close to this bridle, right? In relation to how far it is away when it's cocked, right? 
And then you can also tell because if you look at the kill line, the kill line is just a spectral line that runs through the bridle and attaches at the apex point of the pilot chute, it's straight. And again, you can't really see it in this picture. You can clearly see it here, and we'll talk about this in a second. But it's straight. And the tape that runs through the pilot chute, it's loose. So that's how you can tell that it's not cocked and that it's not ready for jumping. It's collapsed. Now, here on the right, and I'm going to show you at the end of this video, it's a two-step process. Really, really, again, bothers me. I see so pe so many people these days that don't know how to cock their pilot shoot properly. Um, that you've got the uh, the Spectra kill line that wasn't loose when it was collapsed. You've got it now loose when it's cocked. And you'll notice that this seam tape that runs inside the pilot chute is straight. So again, when it's cocked, you can tell now, you can see how far away that handle is from the bridle. And then you can also tell by examining the kill line that runs again through this bridle, it's loose. And again, it's a two-step process to cock your pilot chute. One involves gently. You don't want to rip any type of bar tacks. I see people that are just yanking on the uh, on the putt or the hacky when they're when they're cocking their pilot shoe, which is not something you have to do. Um, gently pulling it until it can't be pulled any further is the first the first stage, and most people know how to do that. But then fully cocking your your pilot chute by grabbing this kill line. And then sticking it inside of the pilot chute once you're through is the second step. Again, you're, most people are incorrectly taught when they're when they're licensed skydivers. Unless you're getting licensed by, you know, a smaller drop zone that does static line, you've got a master rigger. Most people that come off student status aren't properly cocking their pilot chutes, and you know by the time that they've got it into their you know their main canopy into the deployment bag, it's uh. It's just enough to pull the main out, but um, you know, on some of these bigger canopies, there may not even be enough drag to do that. So again, it's very important. I mean, you can look at this from a visual standpoint, and you don't even have to to uh, to drop your pilot chute to know that it's cocked and working properly. Um, again, this is something that I recommend doing uh, before you put your your main canopy into the bag. A lot of manufacturers don't have this kill line right here. Um, inside of the bridle i know vector does but a lot of them don't and if you try cocking your pilot chute um while the uh the main is in the deployment bag you know having this spectra line run on top of your your main canopy like that will will cause some wear over time and i'm going to show you again in the video coming up here in a second uh again the two-step process for cocking your pilot chute and this is extremely important and i just wanted to give you guys a visual reference again this is what it looks like when a pilot chute is collapsed. Again, notice the handle and how close that handle is to the mouth of this bridle. And notice here again how this spectral line, this kill line, which runs from the apex to the bridle, is straight. And then you've got the seam tape. It's collapsed, right? Or loose, I should say, right? It's loose. And then when you go over here and it's cocked, you'll notice here that this kill line is loose. And this seam tape that runs, uh, again, inside this pilot chute is straight. So uh, I'm going to show you now how to cock your pilot chute. Again, it's two steps. So when you get down from a skydive, your pilot chute obviously is going to be collapsed. And an easy way, again, for you to tell is just like we showed in the picture. You can hold it up, and you can see how close the apex where this handle's at is to the end of this bridle, right? And then clearly you can see here that the tape inside of this pilot chute is loose and that this, uh, this kill line is straight. Also too, if there's any confusion, the bridle attachment point to the main canopy that's routed through the deployment bag is pretty much straight. All right? A lot of people don't know what it means if it's squunched or if it's straight, it's, it's straight. But again, the easiest way, you, know, you don't have to actually let this go through the air. The easiest way you can just tell is you can, uh, you can see how close this handle is to the, uh, the end of the bridle. Now, to cock the pilot chute, it's a two-step process. 
First, you want to take the deployment bag and get it as close to the attachment point on the main canopy as you possibly can. And I like to stand right here on the lip of this deployment bag, right? And gently, do not pull hard because again, this handle is just, uh, just attached to this pilot chute by a couple of bar tacks and some straight stitching, right? You can rip this off and that, would, that wouldn't be good. That would be a reserve ride. Hold it up with one hand and then pull gently. Just gently pull until you can't pull any further. Don't yank it out. Just gently pull. This is stage one. Again, there's very, very little tension in my left hand pulling this handle to partially cock the pilot chute. The pilot chute's partially cocked right now, but it's not fully cocked. And again, the problem I see is people that uh, they get uh, to the point where they're they're pinning and they're pinning and they're uh, about to close the uh, the main packing tray, and well, their their pilot chutes that's come it's come un uncocked. And that's a major problem, especially on the larger canopies. So what you want to do for the second stage is, is you want to grab this kill line, right? And you want to pull the kill line as far as you can pull it while still keeping the bridle that's in your left hand straight. And then what you can do is, is you can take this, this bit of kill line and just stick it back in the pilot chute. This is a fully cocked pilot chute. And you can tell that it's fully cocked, again, by examining. You don't need to do this floating stuff through the air. You can just visually inspect that the tape inside the pilot chute is straight, that the kill line is loose. And again, it's a two, two-part process. I'll show you again. Let me, let me collapse my pilot chute. Again, this will be scrunchy. This will be scrunchy inside the deployment bag. Um, which is perfectly normal because that's a sign that it's cocked. We didn't even have to look at the window on the uh, on the bridle to determine whether or not it was cocked because I don't trust that thing. I mean, uh, and it's, who knows who manufactured this uh, if they did it correctly. You want to be able to visually look at the pilot chute and determine based on visual inspection whether or not it's cocked. Again, I take the deployment bag, I put the mouth of the deployment bag as close as I can to the bridle attachment point on the main canopy. Move it if you have to. Gently step on it. As high as you can get your hand is what I like to do. I've got the bridle in my right hand. I'm gently going to pull, not hard, gently pull the handle on my left hand, there's very little tension on it at all. Again, keeping the bridle straight, that's step one. We partially cocked the pilot chute, but it's not fully cocked. Step two, grab the kill line coming out of the mouth of the bridle. Keep the bridle straight in your right hand and pull the kill line until you can't pull it any further. Kill line goes back into the pilot chute, and now it's fully cocked. And if you want, you can check the window, and it's black. Again, a two-step process cocking your pilot chute. Don't be caught thinking that you can, you can jump out and have a successful deployment with a half-cocked pilot chute. Again, the tape inside the, the pilot chute is straight, and the kill line's loose. Hope this helps. See you on the next episode.